good morning class to the Tim Wakefish. And I'm kidding, guys. No, I'm look, I'm sick. I'm tired. I've been here for a few hours setting up all this equipment. I don't know where the hell Ray is. Um, I just want to go. Hey, everybody. Same old, I mean, obviously, we're making a top 10 movies 2016 list. I mean, like, every fucking year, obviously. And this guy just shows up and just hijacks the show. Is that what, is that, is that what your plan is right now? Is that what you just want to do every just goddamn year? Every year we do this list at the end of the year. Yeah. And I come pin. over to your house, and I, and I set up all this equipment. Come in, have to take control. And you pull a me. gun on me. Yeah. What was your end game here, to blow my fucking head off? Yeah. What mean, do you think I'm doing here? I mean, The yeah. same thing we do every December. So you're not trying to take over the show, because... Every, you're right. I did it in your room. I set up the equipment in your room. What, are you just going to not come in your room? Maybe you're trying to piss me off. I mean, so we're making the list? Okay. okay. Listen, guys. 2016 was... An amazing year for uh, movies, yeah. It was fantastic. Are we actually... Just, just do the thing. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, 2016 was an amazing year for movies. And to the point where... Are we, okay. Uh, to the point where... It, we almost considered making a top 20 list this year because there was just so many, so many amazing movies. I mean, we did this back in 2014, but now looking back on it, it was kind of a cop-out and, you know, it's just, we, we had we have to bite the bullet. We have to thin the herd to make it a top 10 list. There were some last-minute changes, too. Like, that's how hard it was making these 10. I'm, I'm still considering changing stuff right now, but we, no, this is the list. This is it. These are at least, I mean, there's going to be a good amount of movies in the honorable mentions list, but for now, here are the top 10 movies that wowed us this year. I mean, it was a phenomenal year for movies, my God. So, uh, yeah, let's uh, get the list. So, yeah, can I just have the gun? You're not back? getting the gun back. Look, I'm just going to get right to it. I didn't think a movie um, about farts could make me cry. Yeah. I, yes, and you heard us right. This movie, if you haven't seen it, if you, you've seen it, you know exactly what we're talking about, but if you haven't seen it, farting is the main crutch in this movie that pretty much holds it all together. It's a movie really about sort of not being afraid to be yourself, and, and that's what the whole... it's. It, I mean, farting is the metaphor, which is hilarious. It's it's like how farting helps you, and it's 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 about how 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 the strange, weird things we all do make up who we are. Like the trailer alone got us. I mean, it was heartfelt. It it looked. I don't know. I I don't know what else to say about this movie other than it's just so weird and so quirky and so fucking out in left field that you'll be wondering why you watch this, but by the time it's over, you'll be really happy that you did. Because through all the farting, through all the clearly immature jokes, <laughs> lies a damn move, a, a damn good movie with heart. I thought this was gonna be another like silly kid sort of Disney movie. I mean, I love I love Disney movies. You know, they're fun. Um, yeah, they're 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 really fun, like a really fun animated film. But what this film brought to the table was a lot more in the sense that this is the same group that brought us Frozen. And personally, I am not a fan of Frozen, but this film just hit me on so many levels. It, I mean, Judy Hopps like positivity is so infectious that it just leaves you with a permanent smile <laughs> the whole way through. I love the movie about the, the message behind it. You know, pretty much following your dreams and not you know letting some like everyone around you all your peers telling you oh you can't do that screw that and also a great movie about sort of diversity and how how small things or big things can come in small packages small things can come in big packages how you can be this type of animal or it's obviously a talk on race and, and culture and it, it does it in such a clever way with all the animal kingdom all melded into one big city of and Zootopia overall this is probably one of the most feel-good best CGI movies that we've seen in years. Mm -hmm. it, yeah, true. It, it out pixar Pixar. <laughs> and Pixar had what, two movies this year? Yeah, yeah, what were those called again? The Good Dinosaur and... No, I know what they were, but okay. no one it, gave a shit. It, that's, that's the point. Yeah. Zootopia was amazing and easily the best animated movie of the year.
What happens when you take John Goodman, a bunker, and a shit ton of supplies? You get one of the most nerve-wracking out out. How, how how is this a sequel to Cloverfield? Yeah, no, this movie does not deserve to be a sequel. Sequels aren't supposed to be this good and different. And look, I, I'm just gonna say out there, I wasn't that huge of a fan of Cloverfield. It's a great, you know, same, you know, monster movie. I I respect it. It's a good movie, but this far superior. You immediately get hooked in by John Goodman's character because you think he's this effing psychopath. But as the movie rolls on, you start to like all these different characters, and you start getting just these confused emotions. I think that's what the movie's really good about. It's, it's all about conflicting like viewpoints, and you're just constantly thinking, what's happening? Who who do I trust? Who is that? Wait, who? You don't know what's happening, even though everything's laid out in front of you. All the cards are on the table. You just have to call everyone's bluff. But above all else, with the characters and everything, you, what I really love about this film is the setting. So simplistic. Just one setting one place this is our home now and this is what we have to pretty much just live with okay i don't want to spoil anything but i do want to say this the ending of this film really want i, I really want a sequel to this movie just a direct sequel to this i know we're not going to get it but i just I, I i want it so badly because the way they set it up it's just so perfect This film was about two brothers who just go rob banks. It's a buddy movie about bank robbers. That's that's like the simple through line. It's, yeah. This movie's not complicated. No, it's not. But what is complicated is how you feel the whole way through. Ben Foster and Chris Pine's banter in this is hilarious. These two brothers are the kind of brothers that hate each other and love each other all at the same time. They give each other shit the whole time, and just when you think one's the tough guy brother and one's the pussy brother, that switches. There's so many big, great moments and small, funny, hilarious moments. For a movie that's so deeply like emotional, we we're cracking up the entire time. But what I love about it too is that even though Jeff Bridges is chasing them, the movie doesn't make him the villain. He's not the bad guy. You sort of are on his side just as much as you are on the robber's side. The villain is more the bank in the movie, which I won't spoil for anybody, but it, it makes for a really good juxtaposition of the two characters and their interpretation on the situation. The movie's not trying to take sides, it's trying to make you ask the question like, you know, who was right and who was wrong. Yeah, and just on top of all that, it, the film is shot beautifully. The pacing is fantastic. The reason why you love these characters is because of the dialogue. You literally feel for these characters. You you pretty much become like their friends. It, it's easily one of the sleeper hits of this year because not many people watch it. No they? one's talking about it, which is bullshit. I mean, some, yes, I've seen like some lists, but like still, nobody is like talking about this film. Like Chris Pine, who's huge in Star Trek, this is the movie he should be, you know, talked about in because he knocked out of the park along with Ben Foster, Jeff Bridges, all of them were on their A game and it just, it shines throughout this film. And I'd like to hook this at the end by saying it's the same writer as Sicario. So, you know it's going to be a good movie. Yeah. Nocturnal Animals. Now, this is going to be a difficult thing because he has not seen this movie. But, this I, I kind of like this through the fact that I'm going to be talking about it right now. So I'm going to try my damnedest to not spoil a damn thing. Because I really don't want to ruin it for him. But yeah, the key word in this film is inspiration. The film utilizes two storylines which, uh, you know, run simultaneously, edited perfectly, you know, cut together perfectly. The pacing is absolute perfection. And it really shines here due to the fact that, well, everything in this film is connected. Overall, the direction in this film is like watching a painter turn a work of failure into a work of art. Anger and loss is what this film thrives on, and you will get the full experiences of that here. I mean, not only that, but the, the cast was also perfection. Amy Adams, Isla Fisher, uh, Jake Gyllenhaal, and Michael Shannon. My God, Michael Shannon. Again, I'm not going to spoil the damn thing because you're going to love him too. Michael Shannon just made this film for me, and I loved his character, and I loved, I, I, I pretty much felt what he felt in the sense that, yeah, this is what you have to do to get things done right. Like, this is what you have to do. But yeah, overall, I don't want to ruin anything. Go watch it for yourself. Don't let anyone ruin this for you. And the overall crescendo of the ending and the whole the whole film just ends with just a nice, somber yes. And you'll understand what I mean. But 
The whole film is just somberness mixed in with just hate and anger. And I, I truly loved it. Did I, did I ruin anything? I don't know what the hell you're talking about. Good. What I love about this film is it just jumps you right in the middle of another film, essentially. Uh, you, you start, you've got these two guys, they're apparently hiding from something, and they travel by night with binoculars, or sorry, night vision goggles, which is fucking sweet. But yeah, um, what really got me, because what you were just saying, like the movie just like starts off like mid-movie, and you're like, what the hell's going on? That's what gets me. The mystery of what the hell is going on. And that feeling doesn't go away within the first 30 minutes. That brings me to sort of like the feeling in the like atmosphere of the movie too, which a lot of people have been calling this movie very like um, reminiscent of 80s films. Um, and I think that's true, but I also think it's more reminiscent of something like a Steven Spielberg early movie or like oh, maybe, yeah. maybe like a good uh, Stephen King novel, like where the, it's, it's sort of... It plants you in this world that's innocent because you got this kid character and and strange things are happening to him But it's from the the adults perspective because they don't know what is going on Our buddy Mason and I were talking about how the movie seems like it's a metaphor for some kind of sickness because your kid Has something going on with him people are telling you What these things are but you still don't understand what the fuck is happening also I want to briefly talk about how fucking sweet the action in this movie is it it's subtle. It's, it's small, small moments moment. that are so vivid. And that's such a smaller scale in the sense that, okay, this just happened. But in the grand scheme of things, like the characters, and you're like, oh crap, what are the ramifications of that? Yeah, what's gonna is happen? Is that person now? dead? Oh my god, like, yeah. Is, what, like, what's gonna happen now because, oh my god, then the run? Oh my god, what is, what is that? So you're just a lot of questions just running through your mind. But by the end of it, you are just happy and you're glad that everything unfolded the way it does. But at the same time, not fully knowing what is happening throughout this film makes this film. From the mind that brought you Lethal Weapon and the severely underrated Kiss Kiss Bang Bang Yo. comes one of the best buddy cop movies of probably this century. I freaking love this movie and it's mostly due to the fact that Ryan Gosling and Russell Crowe are a match made in heaven due to the fact that the two are so unevenly matched that it just provides you with just an amazing hilarious ride. I mean these, these idiots are just constantly clashing with each other the whole way through that it's just goddamn hilarious and funny enough in my eyes, they are not the star of the film. No. The daughter character, who's played by Angry Rice, is hands down the... Sp She's like Penny from Inspector Gadget it's to true. these two morons. And I think, uh, don't let the title fool you either, these guys are not nice guys. They're both a bunch of assholes. Every... God damn, everything they do is just only for their own monetary benefit. And they screw people. <laughs> Constantly. You're settling for these two ass clowns, and that's essentially what the whole movie feels like and you just love every second of it because as incompetent as they are they are still lovable watch it yourself it's hands down one of the best comedies of the year and just the best dialogue too like back and forth yes i love the banter which we all expect from shane black it's fantastic So this was actually my personal favorite movie of the year. Um, this comedy, which no one, it's not on any of the lists, and I've checked a bunch of them, snuck up under me. Um, it comes from Taika Waititi, who people know from maybe Flight of the Concords or the movie Boy. Um, anyway, this movie is hilarious. It's a homage to 80s films, but it's also completely its own thing. I'd, it, I freaking loved it. I'm so glad you made me watch this movie. It was just... From start to finish, I was just laughing my ass off. Even in moments where I'm pretty sure I was not supposed to be laughing. <laughs> I mean, it's heartfelt, it's emotional, and above all, it's hilarious. But out of everything that happens, everything is just soaked in just humor. And I... Even the music is humorous. <laughs> even the shots, the shot composition is humorous. Everything about this movie is just built to make you have fun. And... I mean, yeah, the chemistry between the boy played by Julian Dennison and seasoned vet Sam Neill is absolutely magical. It's a film that will make you laugh, cry, and cheer in all in the span of minutes. And to top it all that off with a, just a, a great, 
heartfelt, humorous movie. It's pretty action packed too. <laughs> Again, like I need to reiterate that it's action packed. It's damn good. It covers all bases and endlessly quotable. Oh hell yes. I, I'm going to be quoting this probably till the day I die. I keep saying this, but this isn't like one of those comedies that comes through and, oh, that was funny for 2016, you know, like Hangover or something like that. Like, this is a movie that I think is going to be a cult classic that we're all talking about for a long time, uh, much like Swiss Army Man. God damn it. Go watch this movie. Like, that, that's all I want you guys More to do. More people need to be talking about this. It's it's too damn good to not just... Yes, cult classic, that's fine, fantastic, but I want as many people as possible to watch this movie because it is just that damn good. He's directing Thor, so that's the movie before he made Thor. There you go. Nice so. little, uh, to see how, how he, you know, how he works. And, yeah, if Thor is anything like this, I'm actually going to start watching the Thor series. <laughs>
Oh, the main guy in this film. <sighs> Dude, the antagonist of this fucking movie. We were one, screaming I just, I just the whole punch movie. In the goddamn face, constantly. I've never been that aggravated at someone in a film this much. And what I love about it is that he's, he's you and me. He's human. His motivation, like, comes from his heart. Yeah. He, he, it's just like the rest of us. Look, I honestly think we should just tell him the premise so we can stop walking around it, too. Okay, fine. This The whole premise of this movie is zombies on a train. We said it was schlocky. And and it, it very well sounds like it, but it's not. This, as I said before, this should not exist. This is easily going to go down in history as one of the best zombie movies ever made. But it's going down, at least in our eyes, as one of the best movies made in the last... 10 to 20 years, especially in the horror genre. Yeah. Because, my God, everything was utter perfection. As we mentioned before, the characters, everything. And talking about the zombies, the zombies in this movie are terrifying. Terrifying. Like, I've seen, I've seen a lot of zombie movies. I've seen them all. I've seen, you know, freaking 28 Days Later. By the way, 28 Days Later was the last movie that I ever saw that the zombie made me think, holy crap, those things look terrifying. But it's also one of those movies that makes you go, okay, that's the last time it was going to be good. They're not going to... They're not going to make another good one. No. This this proved everyone wrong. Well, that's the list. And yeah, this year has just been too damn good for movies. We literally had to just cut one of the movies out of this list mid-making this damn video. Because it's just too damn difficult. But, well, good thing we're going to mention it now because it's honorable mentions time. But yeah. Arrival. We saw. We did, in fact, see the movie. All right. We didn't just leave it out because we're lazy. Yes. Like, oh, what the hell? You forgot this movie? No, no. Arrival. I loved Arrival. It tore me up inside that I had to take it out. Denis Villeneuve is just one of my favorite directors now, and just watching this movie was just phenomenal. But again, it didn't make the cut. That's how good this year was. Uh, next up, um, Hush. Yeah. Uh, Horror movies, man, they're really making a comeback, man. I mean, yeah. Freaking It Follows, Babadook, and like movies like this. I mean, what I love about this movie the most is that the fact that it pretty much takes an old trope and just puts a new spin to it. And that's what I really feel the horror genre needs. And it's on Netflix, so. Yeah, definitely De watch it. You can check it out right now, yeah. Next up, Rogue One. Big Pro Star Wars movie. Biggest blockbuster, probably, of the year. And it's damn good. Yeah. That, what more do you want me to say? Like, go watch it. I don't want to ruin a fucking thing. It's a damn good movie. People it, keep, like, tearing apart Star Wars movies, and I think you guys need to remember, they're big, fun, popcorn blockbuster movies. You go to watch Spaceships and fucking Laser. Y yes. Empire was a fucking grand, super good movie. Right. They can't all be Empire people. It's true. It's it's just... Except go sit down and have fun. You want to watch a good movie? Watch the 10 list we mentioned for you. Exactly. Uh, next up. Sausage Party. This movie is fucking just Seth Rogen and them. They have no rules. They've clearly they they also they brought back. We talked about this in a, a other video. We they brought back the rated R cartoon. Yes, which is amazing. I think that's going to change the game. I I freaking love this movie. It, it's so politically incorrect, yet at the same time, it's like very socially aware. It's politically very aware of what it's doing. I, I love it. it. It pretty much pretty much wraps up our whole livelihood and life and society in just one little very fucked up cartoon. And I loved it. Yeah. Next up, Little Prince. Speaking of cartoons, this is a movie that I'm not entirely sure what the production company, not probably put the production company down here. But uh, yeah, this production company nearly killed this movie. Fuck you. But yeah, it's now on Netflix as a Netflix original and it's just a damn feel good movie. And Beautiful, different types of animation. Yes. It's stop motion. And CGI, it works yeah. so damn well and I freaking just... It's a really good kids movie. It doesn't deal with like really super like adult themes like we just mentioned with Sausage Party. But it's damn... So it's really quaint and very lovable. I, I truly loved it. Yeah. Uh, Deadpool. Hands down the best comic movie of the year. Yeah. Some uh, shitty comic book movies this year. Fuck X-Men. Uh, Civil War was okay. Uh, you know... Uh, BBS was a piece of trash, and Suicide Squad was even uh, was a dumpster fire. So <laughs> it was, it just wasn't a good year for comic <laughs> movies. But yeah, Ryan Reynolds is back. The movie's hilarious, and again, it's bringing it's t taking something that people think of as kitty and then making it adult, which we love. Which, by the way, don't take your kids to watch this movie. No, yeah, they get a hard R. <laughs> they they ran for that. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, next up, everybody wants some. 
he followed up Richard Linklater followed up Boyhood, his Oscar nominated movie, for this hilarious. It, it's a spiritual sequel to uh, you Days know. and Confused. Yeah. It's a bunch of dudes on a baseball team. They give each other wedgies and noogies and... And it's just amazing due to the fact that it feels like the, a real college experience and it's hilarious because of the dialogue. It's yeah. ju- it's great banter. It's a great back and forth between all the characters and it's just... It's fucking funny. It's just... A, again, as I mentioned before, as we mentioned before, fun. The whole point of watching a movie sometimes is just to have fun. And this one pretty much hits the nail on the head. Uh... Okay, I do want to mention this. Neon Demon. I've mentioned, I've talked about this before in another episode, or another video, but uh, same thing as Only God Forgives, it's a visually striking movie. Beautiful. But it's just so filled with metaphors and it just tries to beat you over the head with it so much. It's too it's... on the nose. I know that's his style, but he's very much like, do you get the message? It's right there. That's all I'm going for. I liked this film. And I'm saying that hesitant because I'm weird because I'm right in the middle. Whereas everyone else is very love it or hate it kind of movie. I'm gonna hate it. But yeah. It's, Mason's it's, a love it. Yeah, it's it's okay. I it, it's just style over substance, as I said before. Style over substance. Uh, uh La La Land. I did not watch this one. I actually saw this one. Um yeah, I it's I you know, I hope there's a resurgence of musicals, not just cartoon musicals. Um the movie's really fun. It's re- reminiscent of like a singing in the rain or something. Um, Ryan Gosling and um, and uh, Emma Stone, great together. Um, yeah, definitely check it out. I know Ray would like it. Yeah. All right, and here's other movies that we did not see, and we wish we did. Um, Manchester by the Sea. Apparently, Casey Affleck's great. It looks like Oscar bait to me, but I also hear it's really moving and and beautiful. And it might not just be because this year is that good. It's, these movies aren't just Oscar bait. Everything we're mentioning. And I know nothing about it. Yeah. But the next one I do know a lot about, and I just I, I just need to get my ass up and just go watch this Moonlight. I, I vaguely know, I hear this movie sort of about um, dealing with masculinity, but also homosexuality, about feeling, you know, sort of strong and big, but also being, and it's in the black community. Anyway, I, we haven't seen it. It looks really good. I think it might win the Oscar. Um, yeah, it's the buzz around it is freaking huge, and god damn, it looks like a damn well-crafted movie. Yeah. I mean, from the trailers, all the everything has just been pretty much telling me, go watch the movie. It's fantastic. Everyone's falling in love with this. So I'm like, I, I just gotta go watch it. You gotta bite the bullet and go watch it. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. That's pretty much it. Fucking... This is making it harder for us, man. I, I, I mean, look at us. Two dipshit guys making videos on the internet, you know, trying to get into the whole you know, movie industry. You know, back at, back in the 2000s, man, it, it fucking movies sucked. It's, you used to watch, you know, you watch Too Fast, Too Furious, you're like, give me money, I can do that shit. So, yeah, that'd be fantastic, but sadly, you know, people who were our age back then did, did exactly that, and now they're making clearly movies Good now. Movies, so, so, fuck me, I mean, it's just gonna get harder and harder. Yeah, and I don't want to work as hard as they did, so I'm, <laughs> I'm probably gonna work at a video store. Oh, those are gone, too. Fuck <laughs> Super fucked, man. But yeah, 2016. Um, I think we were talking about this before that uh, this is such a great year for movies. But no, man, I think we're in an era now. Ever since 2016 or 2014, movies have just been getting better and better and better. And I don't know what the fuck I do. <coughs> I'm a little nervous. Yeah, I think we should just quit. No, I'm not quitting. Yeah, I will die before quitting. That what that means. Okay. I'm not actually going to do it. I just, you know, I like to be dramatic sometimes. Okay, well, that's... I'm just going to fire a gun up in your room. Be crazy to just run up in and just... I'm going to pay for that. I said it all up. I'm not paying for that. <laughs> I'm not paying for that. I set all this up. Every fucking time. This is why. That's I'm the last of the Tim Wakefield show. God, you motherfucker. No, God damn it. Okay, I'll, I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys later. Get the fuck back over, you. Why are you riding? Why are you riding, huh?